Good morning. Welcome everybody here this morning. Uh, before we get started with the meeting or re journeying into the meeting, I have asked Pastor Dave to say a prayer for us. We're journeying into our meeting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most holy triune God, we give you thanks for your works of creation, salvation, and making us holy. We ask for your abiding presence with us at all times, and especially now. Let us hear you speak as we contemplate the work of your church. In the name of your Son and in the power of the Spirit, we pray. Amen. Pastor, uh, the reason for the meeting, special meeting this morning, is to uh, vote on some maintenance work for the, that needs to happen in our outside of the building. Um, it's been, best we can remember, it's 15 years since we've had the church totally tuck pointed, cleaned, and then the brick sealed. Uh, to help keep the moisture from coming through the walls. Um, we received uh, bids from Bryan Brothers and Midwest Maintenance, both out of Piqua and Wellman Brothers out of Coldwater. Um, the Bryan Brothers uh, proposal is for a total of uh, $22,636. Um, it just so happened that they had, we had, gotten prices back in 2019 or 2020 um, just during COVID and Brian Brothers basically in let's say a three-year period only raised their price about a thousand dollars so uh, from back then um, so we have been in contact with them they said they could do it this year yet um, the funds for this project is going to come from the endowment fund under the uh, building and maintenance portion of that uh, funding. Um, is there any questions concerning the proposal of what they're doing? Seeing none, do I have a motion to vote on this? Daryl, Daryl Heinz, second. Fred Polfer. I would ask the deacons to pass out ballots. Basically, it's a yes or no vote. Some other work that just lets you know is going to be happening and we've been in touch with Bakken's Paint uh, and the exterior doors are going to get refinished here this spring summer time. Well summer actually now. <laughs> so that'll be done outside so hopefully between doing the brick and the stone and the steps there's some work on them needs done so we're good. Do I have a motion to adjourn the special congregational meeting? So moved by Dave, vote. Darcy Steinecke, second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried and meeting adjourned. Thank you. Before Steve and Krista get away, Steve and Krista served as our voting members at our Senate Assembly yesterday. We did everything, an entire assembly, in one day. And it's all because Krista and Steve were there to steer us right throughout the entire process. But it was a long day, it really was. There was a lot of sitting. And uh, we just want to thank Steve and Krista for um, serving as our voting members from the congregation. Appreciative of them giving the time and also sitting all day. So thanks guys for your work.
got volunteered for a new position on a committee at the Senate level, so for which his wife has already spoken to him about. Good morning. Do you know what today is? It is the festival of what? The festival of the Holy Trinity. You know what? It is the only festival in the church year that is not based on an event, but rather a doctrine. And in today's sermon, I will be explaining to you Trinitarian theology from Wolfhart Pannenberg and his systematic theology. No, I won't do that. Why not? Well, I can think of a billion reasons, having read Pannenberg. Uh, i got a few announcements for you. Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow evening. We're doing VBS with our brothers and sisters at the Methodist Church here in Anna, and it will be from 6 to 8.30. Not too late to register as a participant or a helper. And then also, you know, there's a lot going on in the congregation, a lot of fellowship opportunities for you, just like Ladies' Night Out. And we have sign-up sheets on the tables in the rear of the sanctuary that you can sign up to participate in those activities. So join in the fun. Don't sit on the sidelines. And if that is everything, and I think it is, we will begin our worship with the order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise in body and or spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one and three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading comes from the first chapter and part of the second chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. 
and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let the lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters of every, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the, fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of, ev of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our own image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Uh, we'll read Psalm 8 responsibly. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. <clears throat> when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Second reading comes from the second uh, book of Corinthians, chapter in the thirteenth chapter. Paul writes, "Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you." The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. 
Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. seated kids come on up do, 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 do. oh boy here we go come on up do 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 How are you this morning? Do you know somebody out there? Do you know those people? Yeah? Yeah. Hey, you know what today is? Today is, what? It's Sunday. And this Sunday, we're celebrating the Holy Trinity. Who can explain the Trinity to me? What is the Trinity? You don't know. It's about God. Trinity is about God. God is Father, Abba, the creator of heavens and earth. Did you hear Mr. Heinz read all about that? God created all things out of nothing, including you. God is Jesus. What did Jesus do? Do you, do you see a cross in here anywhere? <gasps> there! Jesus died on the cross to save us. Is God with us now? Yes, God is with us now. Do you know where God is? Here. Who are you pointing at? Daryl? Are you pointing at Daryl? <laughs> Ooh, do you know what? God is in Daryl. Yeah, God's Holy Spirit's in Daryl. God's Holy Spirit is in all of you. Yes, even you, God's Spirit is in you. Isn't that neat that God is in you and with you? You see him everywhere, don't you? Do you know what? God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves you. And that's the most important one. Hey, pastor's my title. Don't wear it out. What's up? Translation? On my dress... Oh my goodness, are you okay? Did you hurt yourself? Oh no. Oh, three alarm, ding, ding, ding. She face planted into my shin. Oh baby, oh. I'm so sad now. Where were we before that happened? We we're talking about God, right? Oh, Luna, we love you. Thank you for pointing out my dress with the cross. God's with you, and God loves you. And you know what God wants us to do? Because God loves us. God wants us to love what? Each other. Can we do that? Can we be kind? Can we be caring? 
Can we love each other? Yeah. You know why? Because God loves everybody. And if God loves everybody, we should love everybody too, don't you think? Yeah. Anybody disagree? All right. Good job. Hey, let's pray. Dear God, thank you. You have made us. And you have said that we're all unique and special and beautiful. And you love us. And we love you. And we love each other. We love Luna. And we hope and pray that she gets better after her face planting into my chin. Dear God, thank you for your love. Amen. Now I got some goodies for you. Got one of those for everybody. And I got, do you like... Now these are a healthy snack. Mott's Animal Assorted Fruit. Want one? You will? You'll take one? You may. Did you get one? You did? Okay. What do you want to do now? You want to go back and sit with Grandma and Grandpa? Okay. We'll do that. I'll go back there too. Is Luna okay? That was traumatic. She hit pretty hard. She's a toughie, though. We know she'll be okay. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is it we should be thinking about this morning as we contemplate the Holy Trinity? I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is knowing. Two different kinds of knowing. I had a friend in high school who... Um, had a crush on a girl in our class, and he was very adept at learning every single thing he could about this girl in our class. Learning everything, and I don't mean that in a weird way, okay? Not a stalker or anything like that. But he was just smitten by this girl and studied her. What class is she in? When's she in that class? Where did she sit at lunch? Who does she sit with? What extracurricular activities does she engage in? Where are those activities held? What time? Knew everything about this girl he was smitten with. He knew her. Knowing. But there's another kind of knowing. And that is, no hey, Luna's back. Yay, Luna. There's another kind of knowing, and that's actually engaging with the person, relating to the person. Not just knowing about them, but know them through relating to that person. It does you no good to just know about a person. For relationship, it means engaging and relating to that person. The Holy Trinity is about God. God in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God knows absolutely everything about us. Yikes! And God not only knows everything about us, God engages with us, engages with the world, relates to us, relates to the world. That kind of knowing, relating to one another. That's what it takes for healthy relationships. Not that just we know about the other person, 
but that we actually engage with, interact with the person, try to relate to them to build something, to build community, communities of friendship, where we live in healthy, happy relations. It's necessary in family. It is necessary in marriage. It is necessary for a life that is beautiful. To not just know about people, but to engage with people and to know them in that way. What does it mean for us to know God and then to know God and relate to God? Because that is what we were created for. It's not just to get a 100 on the systematic theology test or to know every single line in the Bible and be able to quote it to someone, but that we know who this God is, how this God feels about us, how this God relates to us, and how we might relate to this God and one another. Who are you? Who are you really? Why does God even care? DJ read our lessons today. He got the entire creation story. Well, part one of the creation story, right? But along when Carter got that this morning. Won't tell you who did a better job. No, just kidding, DJ. Who are you? within creation. Our God, who out of nothing creates everything and every step of the way, these phases, these days, at the end of it all, God looks at it and God thinks, it is good. From beginning to end, the environment, the planet, plants and animals. What God has created blows the mind in its beauty. It is a masterpiece. And God thinks, this is good. But the apex of creation comes when? With the creation of humankind. It is only in that phase where God has created humankind, where God has created us and given us a role within God's creation. At the end of it, God thinks not only it's good, God thinks it is very good. Imagine that. God creates the Grand Canyon. God creates Glacier National Park. Those beauties and their majesty. And says, it's good. God creates you and it's very good. Do you know why? Because humankind has the ability to relate to God. To live in relationship with God. God has the highest role in all of creation to steward or manage God's creation for the good of humankind. Look in the mirror today. What do you see? You are unique. You are beautiful. You have your own set of skills abilities and talents and when God created you God didn't just say eh, that was good God said it was very good sometimes it's a struggle for us when we look in the mirror and what we think we see 
and we're disappointed or even heartbroken. But that is not how God sees you. Please see yourself, embrace yourself for how God sees you. You are one of a kind and you are awesome. And God loves you. God's done with you and God goes, wow. I've got more to back that up too. Psalm 8. Who are we that God would even care about us? You, all of us, we are a blip. Think of the entire span of history from creation and the span of our lives. We are a blip in all of history. Think about all of the people that have lived, moved, had their being throughout history. All of that multitude. We are a blip. And yet, we are the very same unique, beautiful creatures of God. God's masterpiece. And the psalmist says this about how God considers us. We have been made a little less than divine. With glory and honor, we have been crowned. When you look in that mirror, you remember that. You're a little less than divine. Don't get a big head because of that. But you are a little less than divine. And you have been crowned with honor and glory. To live in loving relationship with God and one another. When Paul talks about this kind of life that we're to live together. I think the most important thing that Paul says and that we need to live together in peace. We're going to have differences of opinions about this, that, and other. But we are a community of God's beloved, unique creation. Live lives in peace. Live lives grounded in God's love. And that will be a healthy community of faith. And we have, as God's creation, been called into community. Jesus, in a little discussion with his disciples before the ascension, tells them, go and baptize, create community, bring together God's beloved creatures into this community where they might re relate to one another in love, in God's love, and may live that love out in life. That's, that's who we are. If we think about Trinity, we'll think about relationships. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live in a dynamic relationship. Three in one, one in three, make known the other, glorify the other, honor the other, are of the same purpose, bound together in that divine, powerful love. We are drawn into that triune love and the power of that love that we probably know most powerfully in Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross which I wear over my dress. It's not complicated. It really isn't. It's hard. It's hard as can be. But it's not complicated. We, all of us on this planet, are God's creation. We are unique, we are beautiful, and we are all skilled in marvelous ways. And we are all loved by God. 
We are called to live into this relationship. The love of the triune God for us by living in love with one another. Period. That is the community of peace. That is the community of joy. That is the community that has been created a little less than divine. And it is all gift. We had a baptism this morning at the 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock service. Um, Ari Schultze. You know, you know Andy and Lindsay and their children. Well, baptized Ari this morning. Andy's probably worked on many of you, stretching out this, that, or the other at physical therapy. Ari entered into this dynamic community of the beloved. And in his baptism into this community of love, we say to Ari, God thinks you are amazing and we do too. God loves you with all of God's power and might. And we do too. And Ari, as you grow into the faith, we will always continue to value you as God's creation and love you and do everything for you in your faith life as you seek to love God and love others. That's our life. It's not bickering, it's not arguing about this, that, and the other. It's about recognizing who we are and living that out. In a community of love, that we may know peace, the peace of God. May that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
confess the triune faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage all of the baptized in the body of Christ. Strengthen them in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all of the baptized into lives of humble service, reflecting the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into be and called it good, called it very good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, Holy Three, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace according to the compassion you have for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence especially those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit that we name before you now. Cheryl, Lois, Bill, Hayes, Tim, Richard, Tom, Kate, Mary, Tom, Carson, Amy, Steve, Darcy, Luke, Jeff, Kenzie, Penny, Mary Jane, Ethan, Kara, Gail, Laura, Adam, Dick, Jill, Oakley Ray, Leah, Ben, Charlotte, Bob, Ashley, Andrea, Sam, Rex, Perry, Helen, Jen, Trish, Diane, Jack, Ryan, Adam, Michelle, Ava, Julie, Deb, Linda, Henry, Gary, Rhonda, Matt, Teresa, and all of those others that we lift up before you in our hearts and upon our lips. Then embrace them with the power of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth upon its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges throughout this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, Holy Three, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all of the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life now and in the age to come. 
Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be not seated and we will now receive our offering. Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
seeds rise in body and or spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks to Mitzi for playing keyboards for us for two weeks, and also to Daryl for serving as our cantor in this season. Go in peace, share the good news. <laughs>